Hey Bobcat Nation, we have the SGA election results, how to be successful during finals, and ways to take your Zoom background to the next level. That and so much more, let's go inside Quinnipiac. Where this piece goes? I think this is an eye. No, that's definitely a nose. Yeah, no. Oh my god. Oh my, oh my god, the show. The show's gonna start. No! You gotta get out of here. Sorry! Oh, we'll do it later, okay? I'm Maggie Smith, and welcome to the third episode of Inside Quinnipiac. There was a lot going on this past week at Quinnipiac, including one of my favorite holidays, Earth Day. Well, some might say my favorite holiday might be my birthday, but I guess Earth Day is just as important. So let's get right to it. It's time for Bobcat Nation in review. Last Monday, the Office of Student Affairs held the annual Undergraduate Awards, recognizing outstanding students, faculty, and staff. Global Citizen of the Year was Sheedy Nuinelli, Member of the Year was Taylor Sniffin, and the Judith Frank Scott Organization of the Year was Q30 Television. There's an awful lot of kindness at Quinnipiac, and these awards speak volumes about that generous and caring spirit that surrounds us. Congratulations to all of the nominees and winners. On Tuesday, April 21st, the Student Government Association held elections for the 2020-2021 academic year. Congratulations to the new SGA president, Sophia Marshall, and all of the cabinet members for next year. Quinnipiac has partnerships around the world. And on Wednesday, April 22nd, the Department of Cultural and Global Engagement held a panel discussion with partners from Nicaragua, Guatemala, Barbados, Ireland, and Italy to discuss the impact and response of COVID-19 on those countries. Regular lives, of course, they have been disrupted. What is happening in Italy is the same as in Spain and France and in the rest of Europe. That is, there are very stringent measures to try to control the spread of coronavirus. Most Italians are quarantined. And last Wednesday was also the 50th anniversary of Earth Day. And even though we couldn't be on campus for the annual celebration, the Albert Schweitzer Institute, along with students for environmental action, hosted Earth Day 2020. The event included a variety of speakers and was highlighted by the annual Eco Fashion Show. There's a lot of great things happening at Quinnipiac this upcoming week. Let's check in with our events correspondent, Paige Meyer, to check out this week's Q5. Hello, Bobcats. We are zooming into another week, so let's check out all that's going on. It's the countdown to finals week. Take part in the Learning Commons workshop series this afternoon to learn strategies on preparing for your finals. On Tuesday, join panelists to learn about the meaning of the Holly Festival of Color Celebration. Graduating seniors, this one's for you. The job search has begun. Don't miss out on the Career in Focus event on Wednesday starting at 10 a.m. with multiple events throughout the day. Are you interested in financial loopholes exploited by authoritarian regimes? I know I am. Then check out the presentation Covert Foreign Money hosted by the Economics Department Wednesday, 1 p.m. Stay active and keep raising the bar Saturday with a bar online class. To access these events and so many more, take a scroll down the gathering place for all virtual events, the virtual quad at qu.edu slash vq. That's it for this week's Q5. Stay happy and healthy, Bobcats. Back to you, Mags. Thanks, Paige. It's become a Zoom world and we're just living in it. Let's check in with lifestyle correspondent Sam Tran with the best ways you can elevate your Zoom game for class and meetings. Are you tired of those boring Zoom backgrounds? Well, you're in luck. Here are some ways to spice up your Zoom meetings. Are you missing your home away from home? I never thought I'd miss the walk from CCE to Arnie, but you can bring a little piece of Quinnipiac to your home by adding your favorite place on campus. I'm no chef, but I can sure bring you to Flavortown. Do you want to be Tiger King? Cause now's your chance. And, if you're looking for a more professional Quinnipiac background, we've made some especially for you to download here. Just a quick download and a click of a button and there you have it. The semester is coming to an end and finals are approaching. With things being a little different, joining me is Reese D'Angelo, an academic specialist from the Learning Commons, to share some tips on how you can end the semester strong academically. Hi Reese, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So with finals approaching, what are some tips that you might have for students to be successful during a virtual finals week? Great question. The first tip I have is if students have not yet checked in with their professor on what their current grade is, now is the perfect time to do that. 
That way, students will have an understanding of where they stand in the class, and they'll be able to set goals for the next few weeks. Another tip that I have is to create a finals study calendar or plan. And this works really well for exams, as well as for written exams, um, like essays, final essays. Uh, and what you want to do is work backwards from when the essays are due or from when the final exams are so that you have enough time to plan ahead and study accordingly. One of the final things that I recommend for students during this time has to do with open note exams. A lot of students underestimate open note exams and with this online format, many professors are giving that option. With open note exams, you definitely want to make sure that you're studying as though you're not going to have anything in front of you. Pretend it's not open note. That way, you truly learn the information. It makes you more confident in an exam environment and more efficient. With open note exams, you also want to organize your notes ahead of time so that you're not scrambling day of or in the middle of the exam. Those are some really great tips. What are some resources available to help students academically? Yeah, so the Learning Commons thankfully transitioned very smoothly online. And so all of our services that were typically offered on ground are now available online. Uh, and that includes meeting with myself as an academic specialist or other academic consultants like the academic coaches. It also includes peer tutoring and peer following. And so I highly recommend checking those out. You can access everything very easily on our MyQ page. There are instructions for how to request virtual appointments. And when in doubt, you can always email the Learning Commons account as well. Awesome, yeah, that will definitely help students during this virtual finals week. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. This week's Bobcat of the Week is Dennis Hanlon, a fabrication support specialist in the School of Engineering who has been working with various individuals throughout the university and local community on turnkey solutions to produce face shield headbands for first responders, utilizing the 3D printer in the School of Engineering. Hanlon delivers the mask's headbands as he completes them. Keep up the great work. Bobcat Nation is Bobcat Strong. To nominate your own Bobcat of the Week, tag QuinnipiacU and use the hashtags hashtag Bobcat Strong and hashtag Bobcat Nation. That's all I have for this week's episode of Inside Quinnipiac. Make sure to tune in next week. Stay healthy, safe, and bobcat strong. Go Bobcats!